Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I have an art journal page for you and I start the spread with some collage papers. I picked out just a few because I don't want to have too many choices. Um, I have some handmade paper that's just a piece of scrap paper and I like to use that blue because it matches the the one with the birds I've picked and I also have some old book paper and some tissue that I have stamped and I glue everything down with a glue stick. The journal that I'm working in is a watercolor journal. It's from a German brand called Kunst und Papier. It um, is not the perfect watercolor paper um, but I really like it for mixed media and for all kinds of yeah, experimental stuff, I would say. I would not use it to paint fine watercolor paintings, but I think it's great for just experimenting and trying out. The paper you see here is a back side of a jelly printing paper. I always use papers to clean my brayer and there I have stamped um, one of the, I believe it's the laced oilies set or it's the mandala set. I think it's the laced oilies um, but I will link all stamp sets that I've used on this spread in the video description. I have a bunch of videos already on my channel um, talking about collage papers and how I make them. I will link them up in the video description so you can check those out if you want to make some of your own collage papers. What I really love about collage is that you can um, place your elements before you glue them down so you already know what's going to happen on your page. And I think that makes it very easy to create and it takes away the pressure. I'm using some white heavy gesso to blend in the background because I don't want the papers to stand out 100%. That would be much too dominant. I just want to have them as kind of a background texture. 
So I go in with my silicone brush and just cover parts of the collage with the gesso. Of course you could also use a normal brush. I often use a dough scraper that is usually meant to be used in the kitchen. Um, or you can use a palette knife. This is something I also really like to use because it cre creates kind of a different texture. And I will share this with you in a moment. I really like the texture you get when you apply a thick paint or gesso with a palette knife. I often get the question why I cover up the background and um, then you can't see everything that um, I have adhered and why I adhere the papers if I cover them up. Um, I think I um, you don't have a plan when you start out with a page and that's good because I don't like to to have a plan in mind. I just like to experiment and play and have fun with the process. And sometimes it happens that I cover up a background completely. But often it is um, kind of a texture or dimension you get because of the layers you have because they are usually shining through in some areas which makes a painting or a page in a sketchbook much more interesting. Here I have applied the um, neocolors, the water soluble ones to the dried page. The gesso has been dried and I'm going in with water and a brush and I blend in the colors. If you don't have the new colors, you can use any kind of water soluble crayon. You can also use the uh, Tim Holtz Distress crayons or the Faber Castell Gelados, the Stabilo Woodies. All these materials will work. I also really like that you get a different texture depending on the surface. Um, where I have gesso, I get a much different look than in the areas where I have the plain paper. And that creates a really interesting textured background. I also try to keep the contrast high. That means that I have some really dark areas and some really light ones that also makes a painting or a layout more interesting. Another nice technique you can use the Neo Colors for or also other water soluble crayons just scribble them on your surface. I am working on a glass plate and use a water and then you can create splatters with them. You can even use this technique to color in stamped images, for example, or use this technique as kind of a gouache palette for painting. While the background is drying, I'm going to prepare some main images for my spread and I want to use these textured birds. Um, and I have picked out a gel print with colors that are matching my background. And a quick information about our shop. I have told you in one of my last videos that we are moving our platform that means we now have a much more comfortable shop where you can make your own account and a wish list and all that stuff. You also can change the language in the top menu. 
uh, which is great. Um, the shop is running already, but not perfectly because we are we don't have the connection to one of our domains because it's, it's still not um, set right. Um, so we are we are online, but our email server doesn't work. So we have our Google email as contact at the moment, um, but everything seems to work out pretty nice. And once everything is ready, I will let you know, of course. So make sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Stamping onto acrylic is a bit difficult with um, the clear stamps because they are super sticky, especially when they are new. And I haven't used these much. And you have to make sure that you have a super well inked stamp pad. Um, and you ink up your stamps very well, then it will work out just fine. Um, usually I like to use the VersaFine Clear because it stamps amazing, but it does not really work on acrylic because it will take uh, hours or days until it dries. And here I'm using stays on. It's always good to um, stamp the first image on a separate piece of paper when you use the stamp for the first time. And what also helps is you use um, one of these white erasers and then um, go over your stamp with the eraser and that will leave a thin layer of rubber on your stamp. And that is great um, because the ink will adhere better if you use kind of a distress ink and it also will stamp a bit better because it's not that sticky anymore. But over time, the photopolymer stamps will lose their stickiness a little bit because you have um, the ink on top and yeah, then they will work a bit easier compared to new ones. I will also stamp some of the sentiments from the set to this paper. I don't know which one I am going to use later on my page. But um, I have a little bit of leftover space, so I just stamp the words to have them ready to go. Or maybe I will use them on one of my next projects. I also will not use all of the birds, so I will just keep the rest for another project. For example, for artist trading card that I want to make or for another collage. I have cut out the birds I'm going to use and my page is already dry, but I wanted to have some more texture on the background and here I'm using stamps from the pencil marks number one. And I use some inks that are matching the background um, to stamp them. I would not use black ink because that will stand out too much and that will just um, yeah keep the eyes away from the focal image later, I would say. When you stamp directly on an original page, make sure that your book um, yeah, lays perfectly. So I have put down this little child book to make it, yeah, to make it even. And I'm using these stays on inks. This Caribbean green is a bit of a strange ink. I haven't used that much because it's so weak and it seems to be watery, so it's not one of my favorite inks, but I thought it would be nice to stamp this here on the background.
I'm happy with the background. I think the stamping looks very nice. And I want to bring back in that white a little bit more. So I'm adding some white splatters with acrylic ink. I think that will just increase the vibrancy of the page. Um, yeah, and makes it just more interesting. When the white paint is dry, I will adhere my birdies. Um, I will do this not on camera because it's just adhering the birds and the sentiment. But I will share the photos here with you so you can see how the final page turned out. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, please leave me a comment and like the video. That would help me really, really much. And I'm always happy to read your lovely comments. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Bye.